I think that drawing actually is my work. Um, I think that distinction uh, between you know drawing and then a final work is gone long ago. In some ways, I think it's um, uh, to even make those distinctions seems a little um, retro <laughs> to me because I think there are very few um, painters who um, do preparatory sketches and drawings, you know, in that old process. So whether I'm actually doing painting, what in the end will be seen as a painting or in the end will be seen as a drawing, for me it's pretty much the same process. And um, the particular drawing in this show, the, uh, the coyotes, this is, um, it was actually some years ago up by Crawford Falls, I, I, we were walking the dog and I saw this um, group of coyotes pass in front and the dog was a small little corgi you, you know like the kind you would think was lunch right or they would think was lunch and they totally didn't pay us any attention they were completely focused all ahead of themselves all obviously on the hunt for something um, and that image has just always stayed with me really really powerfully and so uh, I started drawing coyotes a few years ago and I always wanted to do one big thing of the hunt. So uh, when, uh, when Liz proposed this, offered this wall, I was like, ah, oh, finally, I can do my, my hunt. <laughs> and uh, um, I think there where the drawing part comes in is that it's the intensity, it's not just the animal itself. Like everybody knows what a coyote, if you've, you've had dogs, you know the feel, the structure. So it's different, you know, some years ago I did horses. You don't know them the same way. A dog, you know where that rib cage is, how they move, how, you know, how you get that sense of motion, how you look to um, creating the sense of movement in the dog because um, you know the armature underneath. And um, so in, in, in this one, with the wanting them all to have that very intensity of them, uh, the fact that they are coyotes makes that much easier for me in the drafting process. I would say drawing is the main focus in my artwork. It's something I've always been drawn to. I find I communicate best with graphite, charcoal, and ink. I usually sort of drawing with a simple light line to kind of get um, the proportions right and really like feel out the drawing and what it's going to look like, whether it's the size or where it's going to sit and how it's kind of kind of shape overall. <clears throat> and then I usually build up the images with either ink or charcoal. I really like the second step because it adds like a, I feel like it adds like a certain richness and depth to the drawing. Um, that kind of plays with reality, like within the realm of reality and the drawing. I mainly work in black and white because I feel like it's something special specific to drawing that isn't really created that often through uh, painting or in reality that we really see. So it just kind of, um, I like when it looks like a drawing but then also plays with uh, whether it's actually real or not. That's why I think I often do site-specific work right on the wall um, because maybe for a chance you get like the first glance that it's not a drawing but then the things I play with whether it's like a scribble or a smudge or monochrome palette it, uh, it feels then when you get closer that you realize it's actually a drawing and kind of playing with that space and uh, the malleability of a wall. <clears throat> for this show I chose to do a portrait of Liz. Uh, she's a curator at the Kelowna Art Gallery. I chose Liz specifically because she's probably the only person that that space is constantly in her mind. She's constantly thinking about what's gonna go up on those walls, uh, what artist she's gonna choose, how it's gonna all come together, the themes, like those walls probably are constantly in her mind and she is the one behind all those walls and the one choosing what we get to see. So I thought it'd be really cool for once, for the, <clears throat> the visitors of the gallery to actually see who is behind kind of what happens on those walls and how really connected the space is to her as she is to the space.
And I'd have to say that drawing has always been a major part of my artistic practice, uh, dating back uh, well before I even did, uh, decided to, you know, pursue art as a, a profession. Uh, so it's been a mainstay for me, even though I do other work, and I'm known primarily now for my painting, but uh, drawing prefaces all my work in uh, the two-dimensional arts, so, including printmaking. Um, I draw as a primary resource and ideational kind of avenue for constructing compositions, ideas, etc. Uh, complemented with uh, photographs that I take. So these two sources, drawing and photography, uh, form the basis of, of anything I might do in my studio. And uh, in my drawing practice, I'm primarily uh, very objective-minded. Uh, I draw from observation a lot because I, it promotes you know, clarity, uh, insights into subject matter, and um, opens up directions for, you know, more thematic kinds of interpretations of the subject, uh, largely drawn, in my case, from nature. The work, rather, that I'm presenting in Drawing from Life is uh, called Trees on Knox Mountain, and it's a large format drawing, multi-part paper, um, using ink and, uh, uh, well, brush and ink. There's some pen and, and, and pen work in there, but largely it's brush. And I like to work with um, ink because it's A, a wet medium, and it uh, lends itself to kind of inf inferences of the painterly approach that I might take in other related works. Um, and uh, also gives me a chance to work with more accidental, uh, shall we say, uh, characteristics of the work, because I'm not a very careful drawer. I'm not crazy about being clean and concise and precise. So the medium itself plays a part in you know, the outward appearance of my work after it's made. Yes, I'm very task-oriented, so if I'm drawing a ponderosa pine tree or a Saskatoon bush, I want to make sure it's recognizable as such. And that's a, something that you'll see in uh, Trees on Knox Mountain. In fact, anybody who walks on Knox Mountain may very well recognize a tree in my work that they've seen uh, you know, in their activities. And so for that part, uh, the objectivity is there. Any subjectivity would be seen in the way uh, I've handled the medium and composed not scenically, but rather a kind of uh, montage effect. So a tree that I might see at the entrance to the Paul's Tomb Trail uh, might be uh, placed against the tree that we'd see at the top lookout. So there's no uh, effort on my part to kind of recreate, you know, the uh, direct appearance of uh, the landscape of Knox Mountain. It's rather just a compilation of, uh, of those kinds of natural elements that you would encounter there. So for me, drawing is a way of looking and seeing and interpreting everything that's around me. Drawing is something that I probably do every single day, and it's not necessarily a formal drawing in the studio on a piece of rag paper. It can be on a napkin while I'm making dinner for the family. It can be on a little piece of receipt in the car as I'm driving and I have to pull over and just sort of think of something and just jot it down. And drawing isn't necessarily um, an object. It can be a line, it can be a word, it can be a, a tone of a color, it can, be, it can be just about anything. It's whatever you sort of see and, and maybe it's, it's a way of looking at something and not knowing exactly what to do with it so it becomes um, a mark. It becomes something that is recorded and documented on whatever happens to be um, available at that single moment. And I think this all started when I was thinking about this last night when I was a kid. I was not um, one who had art supplies around the house. I didn't know what a 6B pencil was. I had no idea what an oil past was, pastel was or a chalk pastel or anything like that or what, what drawing paper was. And I remember um, when I was younger just we get the newspaper every week and it would be there and newspapers print never goes right to the edges. There's and I, I was going to check this out this morning to see if this is still the case, but I remember there would usually be this one or two inch um, 
newsprint all around the newspaper. And it was in those spaces that I remember as a, as a child, sort of the newspaper would be around the house and I would just take whatever pencil you had from school and you'd just start drawing in those spaces. I think the work in, this, in the exhibition right now, there's two components to it. The first um, body of work are three pieces that are um, copies of 1970s Harlequin romance covers. Actually, I think they're 1982, 84. What not. And I could go on and on about why I chose those as a starting point, but I find them quite fascinating. So they've been blown up um, to, I can't remember exactly the scale, and it sort of going back to those days of drawing along the newspaper is sort of writing on top of the, the cover of this book. And then as I do believe I have a movable wall, and so the the Harlequin romance images are going to be on one side, and then on the other side is a series of drawings that um, sort of reference back to, to what's on the Harlequin romance. So on the pre-made images, there are sort of um, specific images or specific um, information that translate into a formal drawing on the other side. So there is a relationship between the two sides of the wall that I'm hoping the viewer will get. The role the drawing plays in my studio, uh, everything I do originates as a drawing. One way or another, I start with little sketches, sometimes incomprehensible little thumbnails that I keep in a journal. And um, that's the way I work. I start everything. It's, it's the information I work from. It's how I think. Uh, it helps me uh, center what I'm thinking and uh, finalize what the final work is going to be, whether it's a full-size drawing or a painting. Um, but everything starts with a drawing. Um, I suppose it's like keeping uh, notes if you were an author. Exactly the same for me, um, keeping notes as a fine artist.